from the Voluspa, 36 through 40. 36. From the east there pours through poisoned veils, with swords and daggers, the silver slith. 37. Northward a hall, in Nith Valier, of gold there rose for Sindri's race, and in Oak Mill another stood, there the giant Brimir, his beer hall had. 38. A hall I saw, far from the sun, on Nastrand it stands, and the doors face north. Venom drops, through the smoke vent down, for around the halls two serpents wind. 39. I saw their wading through rivers wild, treacherous men and murderers too, the workers of ill with the wives of men, where Nithog sucked the blood of the slain, and the wolf tore men, would you know yet more? 40. The giantess old in ironwood sat in the east and bore the brood of Finrir. Among these one in monster skies was soon to steal the sun from the sky. 36. Stanzas 36 through 39 describe the homes of the enemies of the gods. The giants. 36. The dwarfs. 37 and the dead in the land of the goddess Hell, 38 through 39. The Hawks book version omits stanzas 36 and 37. Rigis unites 36 with 37, but most editors have assumed a lacuna. Slith, the fearful, a river and the giant's home, the swords and daggers may represent the icy cold. Nithvalir, the dark fields, a home of the dwarfs, perhaps the word should be Nith of Joel, the dark crags. Sindri, the great worker in gold among the dwarfs, Okol Nir, footnote P17, the not cold. Possibly a volcano. Brimir, the giant, possibly Ymir, out of whose blood, according to stanza 9, the dwarfs were made. The name here appears to mean simply the leader of the dwarfs. 38. Stanzas 38 and 39 follow stanza 43 in the Hawksburg version. Snorri quotes stanzas 39, 40, and 41, though not consecutively. Nastrand, Corpse Strand, the land of the dead, ruled by the goddess Hell. Here the wicked undergo tortures. Smoke vent. The phrase gives a picture of the Icelandic house, with its opening in the roof serving as a chimney. 39. The stanza is almost certainly in corrupt form. The third line is presumably an interpolation, and is lacking in the most of the late paper manuscripts. Some editors, however, have called lines 1 to 3 the remains of a full stanza, with the fourth line lacking and lines 4 through 5, the remains of another. The stanza depicts the torments of the two worst classes of criminals known to Old Norse morality, oathbreakers and murderers. Nithog, the dread biter, the dragon that lies beneath the ash, reeled Yildrasil, and gnaws at its roots, thus symbolizing the destructive elements in the universe. C. F. Grimm's Nismo, 32-35, the wolf, presumably the wolf Fenrir, one of the children of Loki and the giantess Angrabota, the others being Mithgarstrom and the goddess Hel, who was chained by the gods with who was chained by the gods with the marvelous chain Glebnir, fashioned by a dwarf out of six things. Footnote P18, noise of a cat's step, the beards of women, the roots of mountains, the nerves of bears, the breath of fishes, and the spittle of birds.
The chaining of Fenrir cost the god Tyr his right hand. CF stanza 44. 40. The Hawks Book version inserts after stanza 39 the refrain stanza 44 and puts stanzas 40 and 41 between 27 and 21. With this stanza begins the account of the final struggle itself. The giantess, her name is nowhere stated, and the only other reference to Ironwood is in Grimnismal 39, in this same connection. The children of this giantess and the wolf Finrir are the wolves Skull and Hati, the first of whom steals the sun, the second the moon. Some scholars naturally see here an eclipse myth. That is all. I will see you for the next one.